Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we're going to study about the bronchial tree, meaning basically what happens once the bronchi enter your lungs. So before we talk about the bronchial tree, it is important to know that both the lungs are divided by fissures into lobes. Let's talk about both the lungs first. Both the lungs have a single fissure known as the oblique fissure, which runs all around the lung, as you can see. This entire oblique fissure is present in both lungs. As you can see, this is the oblique fissure that is running all the way, cutting the entire lung, dividing it into two whole portions. In case of the right lung, there is another fissure known as the horizontal fissure. This comes from the anterior margin all the way till the oblique fissure and divides the right lung into one, two and three lobes, the upper, middle and the lower lobe. But in case of the left lung, there is only a single oblique fissure, as you can see. This is the oblique fissure. It basically is uh, running through the entire lung, dividing it into two lobes, upper and lower lobe. It does not have a middle lobe. The middle lobe rather is presented in the form of, of a lingula, which is a projection of the lower part of the cardiac notch. So this is a very important feature of the left lung, the lingula. So let's talk about the bronchial tree. What exactly happens when the trachea divides into two principal bronchi? The right-sided bronchus is like this, while the left-sided bronchus goes like this. So you can see that the right bronchus is more wider and more in line with your trachea, while the left bronchus is more at an angled position, obliquely more narrower than the right bronchus. The significance of the arrangement is that mostly when there is a foreign body or even if there is an infection, it is more likely that it will go to the right side first because it is more in line, it is wider and shorter than the left bronchi. Okay, so what happens after the division of bronchi has occurred? These bronchi on the right side, as I said, it will divide into an ep arterial and a hype arterial bronchus. Now, since we all know that there are three lobes here on the right lung and two lobes in the left lung, these principal bronchi will further become the secondary lobar bronchi for each lobe. So on the left side, there will be about two secondary lobar bronchi and on the right side, there will be obviously three lobar bronchi. All right. After secondary lobar bronchi, there is tertiary or segmental bronchi that arise from these lobar bronchi and these are 10 in number. So one, two, three. So you can say that all of these secondary lobar bronchi will further divide into your tertiary or segmental bronchi. The significance of that is that these are 10 in number on both your lungs. Each segmental bronchi is going to aerate or provide air to a single bronchopulmonary segment. The bronchopulmonary segment is a very important topic that we will focus on soon. What's important to know now that the segmental bronchi is going to now supply the entire bronchopulmonary segment and there are 10 bronchopulmonary segments in, inside each lung. Moving on, let's talk about even further division of the segmental bronchus. The segmental bronchus further starts to get smaller and more microscopic. First, it forms from the segmental bronchi, it becomes the terminal bronchiole. This is on a microscopic level. After the terminal bronchiole, it gets even smaller to become the respiratory bronchiole area of the lung that each respiratory bronchiole aerates or gives air to is known as the pulmonary unit. So you can say in a bronchopulmonary segment there are multiple pulmonary units. Even further the respiratory bronchiole has microscopic alveoli, alveolar ducts, air saccules and the atria that finally do the function of the lungs which is provide oxygenation. So between each pulmonary unit lie the segmental venules. 
these venules basically are going to be oxygenated by these uh, alveoli and these will carry blood back to the heart all right so each pulmonary unit between them there lies connective tissue containing the segmental venules all right moreover bronchopulmonary segment contains its own segmental artery its segmental bronchi autonomic nerves and lymphatic each bronchopulmonary segment contains its own segmental artery autonomic nerves lymphatics its own segmental bronchi of course so now let's talk about the bronchopulmonary segment in detail the bronchopulmonary segment is basically by definition is a well defined anatomic functional and a surgical sector of the lung which has its own segmental bronchi its own segmental artery lymphatics and autonomic nerves each bronchopulmonary segment is pyramidal in shape with its apex directed towards the root of the lung and each bronchopulmonary segment contains multiple segmental venules as i told you earlier that are lying in the connective tissue between adjacent pulmonary units these segmental venules are used by a surgeon to carry out a segmental resection to isolate a particular bronchopulmonary segment so you can say that the bronchopulmonary segment or segments are of surgical importance for a surgeon to isolate particular segments while operating during any kind of uh, lung disease so that was a brief overview of your bronchial tree let's talk about a couple of clinicals of your lung the first important clinical is the postural drainage whenever there is a lot of secretion in your lung the patient is advised to lie on their right side because the right sided bronchus is more in line with your trachea hence when you lie on your right side with the effect of gravity all the secretions will come inside the trachea very easily and they can be coughed out moving on another important clinical is the foreign body the foreign body is most likely to lodge in your right side lung because i already told you it's more wider narrower shorter and more in line with the lung at an angle of 25 degree whereas the left bronchus is at an angle of 45 degrees in relation to your trachea now which bronchopulmonary segment is more likely to be involved in a foreign body in case if the person is in a supine position the superior bronchopulmonary segment of the lower lobe will be involved while if the patient is in a standing position then the posterior basal segment of your lower lobe will be affected flail chest flail chest is when there is an abnormal rib segment so you can say three continuous ribs are you can say broken hence when you breathe what happens is that was this is the abnormal segment this is your entire rib cage so whenever there is inspiration this flail segment will move inside and when you expire this flail segment will move outside this is known as paradoxical respiration so that was all about your lungs in the next video we will start the topic of mediastinum until then thank you so much for watching